It's good to be here. I had to jump the slot, so um, I'm a bit early, but I hope I'm going to do the presentation as effective as possible. So uh, as this charming lady said, we are one of the four big music streaming companies in the world. We operate in more than 180 countries. Um, and I'll just give you a bit of a kind of insight what has happened to the company. I joined the company four to five years ago, and we transformed it to, uh, from a little French music streaming business, as I mentioned, into one of the global ones. Just to give you the headlines, we have uh, more than 14 million monthly active users on our platform. We are the largest uh, music streaming service in France. We are the number two in Brazil. We are the number three in Germany, and we are one of the number four, as I mentioned, in the world when you look at revenues to the, uh, to the labels. We have unique positions, particularly in the Arabic world. We own more or less 70% of Arabic music exclusive for our platform. And we have one of the biggest um, catalog. We are one of the five French unicorns. We raised uh, 160 million last year on a valuation over 1 billion euros, so quite successful ride. As you can see here, those have been the milestones in 2018. Um, I think the highlight here is, next to the other things I mentioned, is that when you look at our product, when you look at our product engagements, we have one of the strongest ones in the industry, clearly, and uh, it's reflected in the growth we see on the self-paying subscribers or direct subscribers we have uh, with uh, 30%. So a strong position, um, just to give you a bit of a glimpse, we operate in markets where Apple and Amazon are not as active, so we, we try to balance our competition out quite, uh, quite nicely. The French market uh, I mentioned to you, Germany is an interesting position for us because we are the challenger, we have a strong partnership, for example, with uh, Prozim, we have a lot of focus when it comes to the German market on uh, local content, which I'll touch a bit later. We are the second largest uh, in Brazil, and you know, if you in Brazil, um, you, you're pretty strong in Latin, so we believe we should be a kind of leading streaming platform when it comes to music in that region as well. And I mentioned the Arabic world, which is just a new entry. We launched six months ago. Uh, there we have this kind of unique situation, as I mentioned, that we have exclusive content from Rotana, which represents probably 70% of Arabic music globally. So a strong position with local focus on uh, certain kind of areas. The good news is we work in an industry which is super exciting. I mean, when I joined four years ago, most of the label bosses didn't even know what music streaming is. Now everyone knows it's a, it's a huge market opportunity. It will transform the business quite uh, significant. As you can see, by 2018, the uh, music streaming revenues were 16 billion um, today. The forecast is by 2030, it should be over 70 billion US dollars. And just to illustrate you the, the, the kind of uh, size which is coming here, the total music market, everything included, uh, streaming, digital, uh, physical, and so forth, has never been bigger than 20 billion US dollars. So it's a huge, huge opportunity, obviously, you will see going forward. And uh, as being part of this, we will benefit from this one. You can see. When you talk some, sometimes about streaming, when you talk about music streaming in particular, people think it's a big market, it's done, it's, it starts to slow down. True is, we're just at the very, very beginning of a big growth profile. The forecast you can see uh, in terms of uh, penetration for music streaming in the US is around 40%. Sweden, for example, is probably close to the 40% already. And in most markets uh, we operate in, like Germany, France, Brazil, or MENA, you're at 12, 13%, or even below 4%. So long, long way to go, and many, many markets to conquer, and hence uh, a very attractive market to be in as a digital music streaming company. Equally, for those ones who are using, I guess most of those people here in the room using music streaming, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a tough game you're playing, because you, you have to fight for the attention of the consumers and, and, uh, and the customers. It's about the media time they spend with various kinds of services. So we're not only competing against other music streaming services, we compete with Netflix, we compete with PlayStations. Uh, the attention span is getting shorter from a consumer perspective. They spend less time with the product, so you have to be very focused. How do you get them sticky to the product? How do they make them use more of the product? Which is a key challenge. And clearly, when it comes to music, it's probably the most intense competition you can be in. We, we're happy fighting against Apple, Amazon, Google has joined all the race, uh, and uh, the Chinese probably coming soon as well. So it's very competitive, very intense, and you have to find your battle. The way you do it is that you try to anticipate very early consumer trends on the music side, where, for example, uh, people are 
um, sharing, uh, more curious, trying to find, explore things uh, on, on their site. Um, they focus on playlists and tracks, so it's, it's a very different approach, uh, how they listen to music, how they consume music compared to the uh, old days. Skipping, or as I mentioned, the attention span is shortening quite rapidly, and the people rather want to download pieces and, and, and uh, uh, music songs uh, than uh, buying them. So this is the kind of consumer trends which are fast changing we are working in. And our way to win this, and, and, and again, the, the figures have speaking for themselves, is to try to be super innovative. When, when you look at the music product in itself, it, because it's so personalized, it has to be extremely innovative, and you have to really move forward every week, more or less, with, uh, with new ideas. This is just a glimpse of some of the things we have which are making us uh, very strong. Just to illustrate, voice integration is a huge thing for the music industry. Um, the second largest usage of music in the US is already voice devices. It's not anymore PC or tablets or other kind of things. And just to do how you organize search for titles or how you organize playlists on voice devices is, uh, is a big technical uh, challenge we have. Another thing which we stand for, which is unique in the industry, is a product called Flow, where the, uh, people come to us, they just push a button, they have nothing else to do. And we give them based on data, algorithm, self-learning uh, features, the kind of music experience they want to have at this very moment. So it's a very personalized uh, experience, which is unique. Or for example, we are the first one uh, going quite aggressive into hi-fi, or we're testing just to illustrate now 3D listening with Sony on a global basis. So you have to be super innovative in order to stay um, on top of the, uh, of the game. Equally, you have, of course, all the kind of partnerships, which is the key symptom for us. We have over 85 hardware integrations. Um, people want to consume music not on one device. They want to use it everywhere on all devices. Or even now, uh, for example, we have a global partnership with Waze. When you listen to your traffic or look, watch uh, where you're driving, you have integrated the Deezer music stream into your Waze system in order to um, have the kind of perfect experience. And last but not least, we try to be a bit different when it comes to content. Um, we know that uh, two of our big competitors don't care so much about the content anyhow because they sell hardware or they sell uh, shopping articles. Um, we try to be very focused on, on the local side. We try to be very deep on, 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 on local engagement. Like in Brazil, for example, we are by far the largest uh, music streaming company when it comes to Seta Nature. In Germany, we have Schlager, for example. Um, in uh, France, we have uh, French hip hop. And we go beyond music. We were the first one going to podcasts. We were the first one going in Germany into uh, audiobooks, for example. We have uh, tested first ones live radio feeds, live sport events, and those kind of things in order to, uh, to be very local, very focused on, on uh, what people want to do. And we feel that's the kind of place you always can take against the big platform fights that you beat them on the uh, local side. And last but not least, I think um, we, we have a very diversified offer nowadays in, in terms of what uh, people can go. So originally, people always thought streaming is 990 and that's it. You have to pay if it's video or if it's radio. Today, we have a kind of range of offers uh, in order to attract the market. We have freemium, obviously, which is for free. Advertising support, it's very straightforward. We have the traditional premium offering, for example. We introduce a family offer where you get six accounts for only 15 euros, I think, in Germany, which is quite, uh, quite effective as well. Or as a student, you get a discount uh, on, on that one. And we're trying to do the, uh, the Hi-Fi, as I said, as a kind of new upselling tool into uh, new features. So that's, in a glance, in my 10 minutes, I have a very short overview about uh, what we do with Deezer. Just to recap, as I said, one of the best products in the industry, number four in the world when it comes to uh, revenues. Um, and um, a kind of unique market position in a very fast-growing market, which should be by 2030, roughly at 30 billion US dollars. I finished before my time. Thank you very much, and have a good day.